focus. Ideate. Innovate. Enable. Welcome, you've tuned into season 6 of NSE Finviz, powered by CNBC TV 18. And I'm your host, Nitya Balakrishnan. This is that show where we teach you how to make your money work for you. Where we help you navigate the almost puzzling world of personal finance and investment. And to do this, we've travelled all the way to one of India's leading automotive majors, Ashok Leyland in Chennai. Founded seven decades ago in 1948, Ashok Leyland is the second largest commercial vehicle manufacturer in India. The brand is also known to be a leader in the commercial vehicle segment with its constant emphasis on innovation. Along with an ever-increasing geographical footprint. The company has also become a front-runner in the medium and heavy commercial vehicle segment with a well-diversified portfolio across the automobile industry. This week, NSC Finways is at Ashok Leyland's campus in Chennai to engage with young minds assembled there on the theme, Invest in Yourself, Your Path to Prosperity. I think in each milestone of our life, it is very crucial for us to understand how much to save and how much to invest and in what proportions into debt and equity. So having financial literacy is more important to be able to better manage our wealth. In uh, private sector, we do not have the luxury or the umbrella of insurance like in pension. So anything which we make today, unless we preserve it and create it, we will not have anything with us in the sunset years. So wealth management is the core subject for which we need it uh, in the private sector. I always have a fear that probably I might lose my money because of lack of uh, understanding and up-to-date info on these uh, things. So maybe from this uh, uh, program, I'd like to ask uh, your presenters as to how I can get to uh, know the uh, information about uh, these financial instruments so that I can get to invest without too much of a worry. In this week's episode, we're joined by two very special guests, Mr. Lavai Navlaki and Harshvardhan Rungta. Thanks so much for joining us on this episode. And uh, first things first, of course, in this season, we're going to be talking about the theme, which is increasing your personal wealth, how to make your money work for you. And without further ado, let me throw the first question open to Harsh. Uh, answer exactly this, because we're looking at a whole host of, uh, you know, young employees out here who are looking to understand how best to make the money that they work so hard for work for them in return. When you talk about money working for you, it's important that money generates that kind of return that beats inflation. So just tag the entire conversation around, is your mon money earning more than inflation? So when you talk about make your money work hard for you, it means that it should retain its purchasing power. Absolutely. So which means you have to create a portfolio, the weighted average return of which is more than inflation. And uh, if you can jump in here, Lavai, a lot of uh, us believe that saving every month is the same as investing. Uh, talk to us really about if that's true at all. One of the big things that you have to keep in mind is that uh, where you end up losing a lot of money is by keeping money idle. Mm -hmm. uh, so you leave it in your bank uh, and it earns you that 4% and if you're lucky you got 6% in some other bank but it's taxable. I think it's very important first and foremost not to leave money idle. Uh, sure. Have the bare minimum that you need for your monthly expenses in the bank. Uh, I'm not saying invest everything else from the long-term point of view, but have it in a place which is safeguarded from your own sort of misbehaviors, if mm. I may say it. Fair point. Uh, if I can again come back to you, Harsh, then talk to us about vehicles to, you know, make that money grow because uh, traditionally it's always been the savings bank account, but you're saying that so much more you can do. Talk to us uh, about a couple of those tools. So you would have different requirements over different time spans. Sure. So one is an emergency fund. Now the nature of that emergency fund is that you would require it at any point in time. Mm. So the investment also will match this particular requirement of yours. So essentially it needs to be in a bank fixed deposit for example, it could be in a liquid fund, it could be in those products 
which essentially have a liquidity as their priority. Then comes your other goals. You, know, you could have medium term goals. You could want to buy a bigger car or you would want to buy a house or you would want to probably go on a vacation or could be some other medium term goals mm. which are say probably three to five years away. Now, if your goals are three to five years away, then you cannot put in a product which does not beat inflation. So you could possibly add some bit of equity investments, not entirely. Uh -huh. So you could add say probably a 10, 20, 30 percent based on what your requirements are. And you invest that money with a, in a hybrid kind of a product, which has debt and equity both. Sure. Then if you have goals which are five years and away, which are seven years or probably 10 years away, clearly the objective is to create wealth. Hmm. Clearly the objective is that I should be able to buy more than what I can buy today. And I want it to grow to a certain point wherein less money invested gives me more returns. Now, which are those kind of products which have the potential to generate that kind of returns, which is equities. So essentially, uh, how do you make your money work hard? How do you create an ideal portfolio? is divided into different uh, time sets and choose products which match that particular time set. Mm. And talk to us really about your top three picks of how to invest uh, or vehicles of sorts uh, while you, you know, invest into the equity markets. I think the most important investment that you need to make is make a good investment in an investment advisor. Mm. Uh, and for that you need to spend time uh, and select. So if you come to me, I'll tell you great things about me. Harsh will tell you great things about himself and so on and so forth. But you spend time and figure out who is matching your requirement. So that's number one. I think that's the most important thing. The second thing to look at is, uh, you know, what your goals are and to break that up for liquidity purpose, for protecting risk, for creating wealth. The third element that we do as registered investment ad advisor is to ask you to undertake a formal scientific risk profile test which enables us to determine what is your uh, capability of taking risk, you know, your tolerance to risk. Mm. So you might require a very aggressive rate of return to meet your goal, uh, but you are, you are going to be very jittery if more than maybe 20 or 30 percent of your money is put in equity. Thank you for that, Mr. Levi. And on that note, it's time to slip into a quick breather right here on Season 6 of NSE Finviz. But stay tuned because on the other side, we're going to be talking about lucrative tools to best build your personal portfolio. Welcome back. We're still in conversation with Harshwardhan Rumta and Levi Navlaki here in Ashok Leyland in Chennai. And uh, let me go directly to specifics uh, now. And Levi, let me begin this segment with you. And uh, can you throw the spotlight on the different type of mutual funds that one can invest in? Mutual funds are just a pooling in, uh, vehicle. Uh, they allow investors like this group over here to put in different amounts of money, give it to a fund manager and say this is the mandate that you have to invest in. So you can get an equal of, equivalent of a bank account, of a savings bank account in a liquid mutual fund. You can get an equivalent of a bank fixed deposit in a debt mutual fund. You can get the equivalent of investing in the stock market in an equity mutual fund. Now, beyond that, you get a, a few combinations as well, mm. where you can do a little bit of equity and a little bit of debt, which comes in as a hybrid product. Uh, you can then decide, I want to take a lot more risk with the equity and invest only in a particular sector, only in a particular segment because I like pharma, I like technology, so I only want to put money there. Mm. So you can do all of this, but all of this, I think one has to keep in mind what the goals and objectives are. Harsh, would you want to jump in to add anything to this? What do you think are, you know, top two or three best kind of funds? Uh, or does that again depend on an in individual investor? So, no, I, actually, I'd like to throw light upon what is a large cap, mid cap and a small cap. Sure. There are three different kinds of, uh, you know, companies that are available. So, and which has been very standardized now and uh, defined by AMFI. So, it's very clear for us to understand that. Mm. So, when you are investing into equities, you are in ineffectively buying shares of that company and you're becoming a partner of that company. True. So, what you need to understand from your side is which size, what kind of companies do I want to invest my money into? Large cap are all, all of those companies, as per market capitalization, they rank 1 to 100. So, all the top 100 companies of the country in terms of market capitalizations will be called large cap. Typically, if we see all companies above market capitalization of 30,000 crores and above are large cap. Large cap. Now, the mid cap. So, as for the de amphi definition, 101, the company ranked 101 up to 250 is, is called a mid, mid cap. cap. So, the market capitalization would be about 10,000 crores to 30,000 30, crores. So, small caps are on 251 onwards till the end and all market capitalization up to say probably 9,000 or 10,000 crores. 
So when you're comparing a return generated by a small cap fund with that of a large cap, mm. it's actually comparing apples and oranges. As an investor, you're comfortable putting your money into large caps. But you've looked at only returns, then you'll end up picking up probably mid caps or a small cap. Mm. So you need to understand what you're investing into. Absolutely. And in fact, we're sitting in the last quarter of the fiscal year. So it's, it's an apt time to talk about, you know, everybody's currying to make their investment declaration. And in that sense, sometimes even tending to purchase insurance that is not necessarily needed by them, simply as a guise to save tax. So, uh, Lava, if you can actually talk about the importance of investing into insurance or if setting aside money towards insurance is investing at all. Insurance, yes, becomes a temp temptation to invest in uh, from a tax point of view. And because you look at it and say, okay, if I get this receipt and show that this is the amount of premium, I'll get a tax break. Uh, so insurance really is not investment. Uh, we all must understand the purpose of each of the products that we are investing in. The purpose of insurance, life insurance, is to replace the economic value of a person. So if you are contributing 1 lakh rupees a month to your family, if you are not there, imagine an ATM giving 1 lakh rupees to your family. Cannot replace the emotional value, but that's the economic value of you. If again I can continue with, you know, uh, the core topic for this segment, which is really building the best portfolio for yourself. Uh, again, we're talking about another tax saving instrument, which is the equity linked, uh, you know, scheme. So ELSS, can you talk to us really about ELSS as a tool to park funds? Now you want to invest in equity because you believe that's the right product and you also want to save tax. So ELSS is a product which offers you a combination of both. It, it is an equity investment and it qualifies for tax deduction under Section 80C. Sure. The only condition being that because it is enabling you to save tax, there is a lock-in period of three years from the time you make an investment. So if you have long-term goals, why not put that money in ELSS and also save tax at the same time? It helps you meet both your purposes. Let me then uh, take a couple of questions from uh, members in our audience then. Uh, hi, actually I'm looking for a corpus of 1, 1 1.5 crores over a period of 15, 16 years. Uh, where I can spare like 20 to 25k a month. So what kind of the portfolio investment you propose me for that? Yeah, so you're looking at specifically for overseas education. Yeah. Uh, so a couple of ways to do this. One is to make sure that when you're making your monthly investment, some portion of that money is going into investments which are foreign currency based and not rupee based. So you get feeder funds in India which are investing overseas. The other thing is obviously then, again, not put everything in US dollar equivalent because you might see a situation like we saw for four years just before these last three, four months, where the rupee actually strengthened by 10% in the last four years. Then in the last one year or so, it has depreciated by 10%. Thank you. We have time for one final question in this segment. I just want to know whether I can go for uh, buying a home now, in, now itself or let me invest something and get money then instead of paying EMI, I can buy in my own money. So what's the best option? Uh, so well, you know, the decision to buy a house essentially is what your requirement is. So if it's your first house, if it's a house that you're going to use for self-occupation, then there is no discussion. There is no comparison that you would make it with an investment. Okay, because there's a different emotion that is attached to owning a house for yourself. So if it's your first house for your self-occupation, then of course you will go ahead and buy it right away and pay it over a period of time through EMIs. But if it's an investment, if it's purely from a purpose of investing, then you have to evaluate whether it makes sense to invest in real estate as an asset class. What is the future of real estate and vis-a-vis -vis what is the future of businesses via equities? So when you're investing in equities, you're investing in businesses, right? Well, on that note, it's time to take another breather on the show. But stay tuned. We have individual Q&A with employees here at Ashok Leyland on the other side. So good to have you back here on NSC Finbase powered by CNBC TV 18. And let's directly throw the floor open to employees here at Ashok Leyland in Gindi, Chennai. There, the one standing, the gentleman in the purple shirt. Uh, in my view, I, I believe that there is an element of luck in stock market. Even though we say it is a formula and you know everything about the market. But still, I, I feel there is an element of luck. Should I depend on my luck or on my capability? Oh, your views, please. Uh, you're actually right that uh, investing in stock market or investing in any, even real estate for that matter, you may be just lucky to have bought into a property and there's a highway that just comes up around it. Or there could, there could be some economic development around it. 
so you could gain out of it so in equity or in any other investment there is definitely a uh, you know a factor of luck involved in it now the other part of your question was how do i know whether i'm lucky or not now this you will know only after a period of you know say probably three or five years when you realize that i've gotten at the wrong time now how do you mitigate that uh, you know that luck part of it is that you invest every month if you were to buy into a particular stock and you are going to spread that investment over a period of say 3 to 5 years and you are going to invest every month for 3 years or 5 years you are going to average your investing your cost of investment over a period of 3 to 5 years so that dependency on luck will come down but you are right there is going to be a factor of luck if we can have the microphone over to the gentleman uh, hello sir i am santosh uh, i started my investing in 2017 with my strategy of investing in small caps so in 2017 i have a good returns but whereas if i see from jan 2018 the market was fallen and the index is negative 35% in small cap now i have a question uh, at my, at this situation whether should i buy more stocks and average it or should i sell it or should i hold it how will be the market for small caps in future so i think the important thing is when you got in what what did you uh, get in for what was the time horizon that you invested for and if one was to look at small caps and their historical performance uh, typically the small caps tend to be a lot more volatile because as harsh explained earlier we are looking at company number 251 all the way to the end so if your particular investment in in the stock directly or in a mutual fund picked company number 645 then that company may may not do very well right i had you got into small cap index saying that first and foremost i'm looking at this from a 7 to 10 year perspective number 1 number 2 i have not put all my money here i have made sure that i have equal pockets or whatever is appropriate for me into large cap and mid cap i'm just looking at the equity component so ignore the rest i'm assuming your allocation to equity is correct within equity you need to obviously break it down and one of the problems that you might have faced is that looked at more past returns when you got in yeah. and it looked extremely attractive it was obviously the best asset class to be in uh, somewhere towards the end of 2017 and then it turned out to be the worst in 2018 yes. uh, there is no guarantee to say that 19 will be good bad ugly same flat negative we don't know but we can say that if you are if you have selected right uh, and you are willing to go the path and of course more importantly i hope you have not put all your money in in 17 and waiting if you have staggered it and put you've got whole of 2018 averaged at much much lower price so when the market sort of moves up you will get benefit for all the entries that you have made in 2018 and on that note we're absolutely wrapped up on this edition of nse finwis lavai and harsh thanks so much for joining us on this episode for all of you out there their insight is just tip of the iceberg do log on to our website nsefinwiz.com for more such tips on personal finance and wealth management of course do follow us on facebook and twitter the handle is at @nsefinwiz from the entire team that put the show together goodbye and thanks for watching uh i found this uh, show to be uh, really valuable i have been investing for uh, quite some time and even so uh, you know there was a lot of stress on understanding ourselves as an investor before uh, really making any decisions uh, that's been the key takeaway for me uh, for instance understanding my risk appetite and what are my uh, timelines and horizons uh, coming here i uh, i learned something on uh, what is investment where to invest and how to invest so looking forward i'm just planning to invest something but uh, as they said i have to think about and search understand today's session it was very useful uh, actually i was not into stock market so far and today i got good insights into the, uh, the business uh, investments and definitely uh, i will start investing at least 5% of my uh, savings into uh, stock market Focus. Ideate. Innovate. Enable.